Bloody good. Now, this is where it, this is where it hurts Biaggi, isn't it? Now, there you go. Yeah. Same thing yeah. again. So calm, so cool. Just really hasn't showed any signs of being rougher. Arata takes the 250cc championship. <laughs> I, know, I was wondering what was coming up next. <laughs> I think you did a great job. Yeah, good job there's no Russians in it. I'm struggling <laughs> with that one. All right, so Oliver Jacques there. We sit on the silver bike. 19 of these laps to go. Race distance 111 kilometres. Yeah, the important thing is here, I know I say it every time, but the start is so vitally important because you've got to get up the hill in the leading bunch. You know, the 250s are so close time-wise, so let's see who gets the bunch. Underway in the middle bike, they're really getting, uh, having trouble getting the power down. It was lifting wheels and skewing itself all over the track as they come down into the first of the left-handers. That looks like... I think it's Nomata, the uh, Japanese guy on a Suzuki. It's the only Suzuki. This was the Suzuki that uh, John Kosinski rode in the Grand Prix. And... Um, blew the bike up on intentionally and got the sack from Suzuki's because they said the bike was no good. All of a sudden, the thing so far is leading the Grand Prix. It looks like Biaggi's second and... Can't quite see who's in third. Well, the battles this year so far be, uh, between uh, Harada, who was back and in fine form, Biaggi, of course, defending the championship, but there's been nothing in it. I mean, there have been four or five riders snipping away at each of the races we've seen so far. Yeah, it looks like uh, one of the um, factory Aprilia, I think, in third place, maybe Locatelli. You see with Harada, Harada's the fourth of that bunch there. He can't afford to... He needs to catch up pretty quick in the next couple of laps because he, if he gives him this scout, he's doing pretty good. If he gives him that much of a gap to start with, Daz, then you've had it, you know, you have stay with the B team. Yeah, well, Biaggi has made a much better start this time round because uh, Harada nailed him from the word go in Indonesia, and it was just a fantastic battle. You may remember that Biaggi had dived into a corner, but Harada had had that wonderful line, that smooth line coming out, and that's how they traded the, the lead so many times. Well, yeah, you know, the thing about Harada and Biaggi, their riding styles are so totally different, but uh, they both add up to the same thing. If you can see what that third number is, <laughs> if I can... Looks, uh, hopefully, it's number 19, which is Oliver Jacques on the Honda, not an Aprilia. Somebody there just looking at having a go at Harada. Biaggi now all over the back of Numata. So he's, uh, he's gone out for the boulder on bike 52. Biaggi on one, there he is. Harada back into fourth place. You can see just back off the pace a little bit. But, uh, in fact, he's just got bumped back one more. Yeah, that's Okawa on the Honda, I think. Yeah, number 10, Okawa. That's not good for Harada. Obviously, he's... To me, going up the hill on the first lap, his bike didn't look quick. If you look down the straight there, it doesn't... He's not um, sitting in the slipstream of Rukawa or anything. You know, he's struggling to stay up there. Rukawa's picked up where he left off in the uh, first couple of rounds. He's been pretty impressive this year. Well, yeah, he should be. He's on a factory Honda. So there you go, right, Harada Aoki. Well, look at Waldman right down the pan. Way back. Aoki back too. But the struggles have been fantastic. I mean, these bikes, uh, they turn on unbelievable close racing. No doubt about that. Biaggi's always in the thick of it. You've got to give it to him. I mean, he, he really is a goal, Biaggi. Oh, he is. And now he's got the perfect chance because the man that can really match him riding-wise is Harada. And if he can make a break now, get, get uh, past the Japanese guy in the matter on the Suzuki then he's got it made. You know, if he can just get in front of the matter and make a break, um, you see how far Harada is back. He's obviously got... Uh, he's in fifth place, obviously got some kind of uh, problem. Back in fifth place, Biaggi back in second. Namada up in front, though, leading them around this time round. Biaggi just had a good look, went all over the back of him, I think, just biding his time at the moment. But the, the, uh, the, oh, the rider out front <laughs> doing a good job. What about the dust getting kicked up? Yeah, that's Oliver Jack just stuck his knee in the dirt. Sometimes you go into a corner and you're looking at the next corner and you forget to get your knee out of the way and it just sort of hangs over the grass and sort of tucks in the dirt a little bit. Biaggi's bike was uh, incredible in the last round. He'd go so wide and stuff it in in the turn into the corner and, of course, then Harada would just ride round him. Biaggi comes up again all over the back of Numata now, decides this is the time. Tyres are warm enough, time to go. Horsepower, Aprilia horsepower, that is, because... Uh, he was able to pull alongside uh, uh, Namata pretty easily. And it uh, doesn't look uh, all that hot for Harada at the moment. Oh, excuse me. 
There you go. Oh, <laughs> no, you don't, he says. <laughs> That's it's, uh, This chap, Namata, won the uh, Japanese championship last year, so he's no slouch of a guy. And when you think this is the only bike that Suzuki are racing, you know, there's all the Hondas and the Yamahas and Aprilias and that, so um, it's not going too bad so far. Jacques still in third. Ukawa is back in fourth. Fifth is Harada Biaggi now. There's still plenty of time. Uh, Numata has really put the hammer down now, opens up maybe two or three seconds. Remember, remember they, they've raced here so many times. They know this place so well, and Biaggi would know that. I mean, he's going to sit there and bide his time. But then, he really can't because now Harada's now, on the charge. Oh, oh, oh I, big slide. I tell you what, Harada's trying hard. So Numata, the fastest on the track at the moment. Harada, you saw half a big lose there. Big wobble as he came out chasing... Uh, is it Shark? No. Nope. <laughs> I, I saw right at the back of the frame earlier on, I thought it was Harada, I had a big sideways earlier on, and we definitely saw him have a sideways again just coming up the hill there. And it's, that's out of character for him, does he? You know, he doesn't usually uh, ride like that. A car wire, of course, it is that's uh, in front of Harada. And um, uh, Biaggi now comes up right on the tail as they come out of the corner again. Yamada doing a really good job, tucks down, not interested where he's been, as you always say. He's yeah, only exactly. worrying about where, where he's, he's going. going. So he's doing a good job there. Half a quick look under the shoulder. But Biaggi just stalking him at the moment, the world champ. Biaggi trying really hard. You see he was flat on the tank coming through at right-hand kink. And look on the brakes here. This Harada. Yeah, I'm just looking to see, uh, just watching Harada, because I've never seen him do that sort of twice in one lap before, you know, it's, uh, doesn't, um, it's out of character, you understand what, what I mean? Well, he'd expect him to pull out and really just whip up into third place, out oh, he right, comes now, as we say, but see, he's not doing it with any, uh, any conviction, is he? He's popping out, he may be just getting up a place, but over the past few races with him back in form, he really has been popping out and just blasting his way through. Now he's made up some time. Namata now oh. is taken by Biaggi this time. Biaggi's this time to go. Yeah. Namata comes back. And you see, that's a classic thing. You rush in Harada now up in the third. He, he, you rush into a corner and you go in deep and therefore you've got to come out slow and that's exactly what's uh, happened. And that's exactly what was happening last time round with Harada and Biaggi. I mean, that's exactly a repeat of what Biaggi was doing. You'd be getting frustrated doing that. So Namata now still leads him at this very fast left-hander. Harada now staying to make the inroad. So whether he was just playing his tyres in or not, but now he's really come on in I, leaps and bounds in third. He's... Tell you what, he's making up a lot of ground very, very quickly. Fastest rider. Yeah, but you see the amount of ground he's made coming up the hill there. That is... Astronomical. Boy, yes. The Aggie back in front. <laughs> Yamada is second. Look at Arada now. He's made, in half a lap, he's he's probably made up seven or oh, eight. Oh! Mike no, and Arada so down. Hard. Oh, no, no, no. Let's hope he's OK. Ah, oh, rotten luck for Harada. Yeah, he's up. He was just trying too hard, does it? You oh. know, that's it's your heart rules your head in and watch. Watch back, this. Hold on the power, the back just whoa and bad slap as he comes and down. And it's nasty because the bike's the behind bike's you, him, but yeah. as luck would have it, the bike goes forward into the kitty doodle or whatever it is. And uh he's okay. You know, I was just surprised how hard how hard he looks like he's done something to his yeah, right arm. Yeah, he's holding his right arm there. I I hope that it's that it's just badly bruised because, you know, he's such a good rider and, and he has so much bad luck, doesn't he? That's unusual for him to try that hard. So, so, do you understand what I mean? It's totally out of character. Well, we were saying that he'd made so much ground up in mm. just half a lap, yeah. so he decided this was the time to go. We've got to go for a break. We'll come back shortly. Biaggi's still leading. Welcome back. Nice to have your company from Suzuka. You're watching the 250cc Japanese Grand Prix. Max Biaggi out in front at the moment doing a terrific number on Numata, who did lead the first opening laps with some spectacular riding. Then it's Jacques, Ukawa, Aoki and Hugger. Yeah, the big improver of the year has to be that Oliver Jacques. Last year he rode uh, just a standard sort of off-the-peg uh, Honda and um, raced a lot with his teammate on the factory bike. This year he's got a factory bike and he's just blowing his teammates to the weeds. Biaggi, of course, now would know that uh, Harada has come down and uh, that'll take some of the pressure off him, of course, because uh, he and Harada arch rivals in this class. But gee whiz, it's bad luck for uh, Harada. He doesn't get any luck. I mean, he seems to get over one 
injury then he puts it down again and we only hope that that's bad bruising and uh, and certainly not a break well, i have to say you know body language wise the way he was kind of looking at the way his arm looked it uh, didn't oh somewhere a bit on the tight side there it did, didn't look all that good i have to say so bike 10 is akawa some new names new people here emerging from these 250 cc's interesting comments from gary mccoy at the end of this race that I think that are relative to uh, this class of racing that, that may interest you. Uh, we spoke to Gary just prior to going over to Japan and uh, of course we'll be talking to Daryl Beatty as well. So plenty to come your way but have a look at the pack here. This is 250cc at its best all over the high speed train. That's third position way back to eighth mind you. Well, Nothing this, in it. This is where the action is isn't it? I mean this is going to go backwards and forwards for the whole race because uh, a whole bunch of these guys are, uh, in fact, nearly all of those guys are the wild cards. There's uh, Kato, Hager, and... Uh, Ruzia there, I saw the big lunge. Big was lunge. it? The big lunge. Up on the inside, or was it Aoki? Aoki, yeah, it was Aoki. Oh, there's a lunge for you, doesn't it? Same one, same bike. <laughs> so he's, in, uh, he's on a mission. He's just picked himself up two, two places in two corners. That's incredible when you think uh, that Aoki is it's, that's in the 250 now. His brother was the guy in the 500, and his other brother races in the 125s. And two years ago, or a year ago, the whole, whole three of them finished in the first three. This is a tight battle. Kato leading on 74, the group there. So again, new name. Uh, wild card entry as he comes in, 74. There he goes. Bike 10 is Akawa. And it looks like, you see the yellow bike there. I, I think it's Ralph Waldman. So he's come from a long way back. Remember, we made comment how far he was back. Yeah, it's, he's not having um, the best of time. He's not that happy with the bike. He, he wasn't through testing, then he said it got a lot better. But um, for Ralph to be that far back, he's, um, he's got to have some kind of problem. It's probably a race where a lot of the Europeans, Australians, don't like to go to Japan when the local riders are given a chance on a track that they know so well, being urged on by their home crowd because, I mean, they always do well here. Whoa, the good move there by uh, Aoki. He just flipped around the outside. He's uh, definitely a hard rider. Yeah, with the, with the Japanese guys, you don't worry about them too much, Daz, because they're, they're only here for the one race and they're not going to take any... They, if they take points off you, it doesn't really matter. Do you understand what I'm saying? They're not going to be there next week or the but week exactly after. Exactly that, after. exactly that. But they certainly terrorise at Suzuka, don't they? <laughs> so no doubt about that. So the least. So Biaggi now, still out in front. And uh, he has really settled down, this rider now. He can take pressure off most. And I, I think if you saw the last round, the pressure that Harada put on him, and they swapped the lead sometimes two and three times a lap till uh, Harada nail him in the end. But... Uh, Gee whiz, he's riding so well. He's always up near the front end of the field. He's always putting pressure on anybody, trying so very hard now as he makes a run for it. Well, yeah, you know, that's the thing to do now. He knows Harada's out of the way. He won't be worried too much about Numata because if Numata does sort of manage to stay with him, um, it doesn't matter. You know, if Numata wins, so what? You know, it's... Uh it's um, not a lost championship wise. Interest now is whether this pack, this is from third way back, can uh, get actually in touch with Namada because that's where it'll get interesting. That's Kato there on 74. Well, yeah, it just depends how much, um, it just depends how much Biaggi pulls out on Namata. You know, if, if Biaggi is intent on just going and just whitewashing everybody, then Namata will realise he's got no chance of uh, getting up there again. Then he could well drop back into the hands of this lot. Akawa sitting in behind there on bike number 10, in behind Kato. And a Jacques on bike number 19, Waldman on the yellow colours. Yeah, that's with Harada, that really does surprise me. You know, it's something that is really so out of character. And uh, as I say, the, the, uh, the needle between Biaggi and Harada is quite horrendous now. You know, it's uh, it got to the stage where it's virtual obsession sort of thing. And uh, that's not really that good because it produces things, you know, a mistake by Harada because he was just simply trying to catch up half a lap in half a lap. And he did it, but uh, paid the price, obviously. All right, so Biaggi still leads here with around two and a bit seconds. Uh, back to uh, the second price rider, which is Numata, then the pack chasing him. Can they catch him? We'll take a break, come back.
Welcome back live from Suzuka, the 250cc Grand Prix. Now, this is the pack that are battling out. Let's recap the top runners for you. Biaggi, Numata, Kato. They're one, two, and three. Then it's Akawa, Jacques, and Aoki. And uh, that's after eight laps. So not the usual 250cc struggle, but pretty interesting behind Biaggi. He, at the moment, has had a bit of a runner and gone out. Now we're seeing little scraps develop. This is Aoki here and Jacques. Yeah, you're right. I mean, normally the 250 race is just handlebar to handlebar with about eight or nine guys and this for a 250 race this year is really very very spread out maybe the nature of this circuit though too there's some mm. very fast parts of the circuit very technical round the back jack there and uh, aoki they've had a pretty good battle since they started so has kato kato there as you can see and akawa so akawa's got past him there in that part of just a couple of corners has blasted past kato let's see what he can do now he's been trailing kato for probably two or three laps Poor old Numata, he's having a real uh, lonely ride. All he's got to do, he'll be forgetting about his uh, pit boards uh, as far as information as to how far Biaggi is in front. All he'll be worrying about is how far this mob are behind him. And uh, it just seem, makes a 20-lap race seem like a 200-mile race. It's purgatory. You know, you make a second, you lose a second. It uh, does get you. Akawa now getting past Kato. He seems to uh, be a bit more comfortable out in front. It'll be interesting to see if he can make a break here and, uh, and get a little bit closer. Well, the thing about Okawa is he has more Grand Prix uh, experience than Kato does. So it's, uh, if anybody should be able to do it, he should be able to. Well, he'd have his mind fixed on trying to beat uh, Numata. Well, yeah, but uh, I don't think anybody's going to get near Numata. They're going to be wrong. This is Biaggi, the world champion, and a uh, classy rider these days. Well, well, he's always a classy rider, but perhaps dropped the bike once or twice too often uh, a couple of years ago. But these days, very reliable, very fast, and doesn't mind mixing it with anybody. Look at that. He's got eight and a half second lead, you know, and you see he's still trying. He's still flat out, flat on the tank through that right-hand kink. And uh, just look at his body language. He's not backing off in any way, shape, or form. Because he was... Uh, he really wasn't happy to be beaten by Harada the last Grand Prix, and uh, he, there was no doubt he was making out. Uh, I spoke to one of the guys in the team, and he was apparently was really miffed that he didn't get pole position. He was uh, on track for it, so he thought, and then he came into the light. In actual fact, this corner here, and somebody was in front of him, and he had to go right round the outside of him, otherwise he was convinced he could have got pole position. So. Uh, as I say, it's quite unusual to have the amount of sort of uh, verbal friction between uh, a couple of guys in racing as you have between Biaggi and Harada. Absolutely fierce competitor, no doubt about that. And as Barry said, doesn't like to be beaten. I guess nobody likes to be beaten, but he takes it almost as a personal affront when he gets beaten, particularly from Harada. <laughs> so doing a really good job here at Suzuka. He's just pitched him this afternoon. He's just absolutely destroyed him. Mind you, long way to go yet, and we've said all these things before, and then something's happened. But I think he's um, he's really fixed on just going as quick as he can, or right, not exactly as quick as he can, just watching his pit board. And uh, as I say, he's still trying really hard. He's trying like somebody's right up his backside. Ralph Orman, way back in eighth. That is unusual. Well, as I said, you know, he's, he's not happy with the bike this year. You know, that it's... Uh, during the testing, he said it was the biggest heap of junk he'd ever ridden, so they took it back and modified it, and uh, then he said it was a lot better, and I think he got his legs slapped, actually, because he said it was a wonderful thing and one of the nicest bikes he'd ever ridden when he got the new one. <laughs> and, um, you know, that's it. You know, you don't suddenly get something that's a heap of junk and steers like an airport trolley and then sort of take it back and it heals up, and uh, it's wonderful and you love it. You get that same trolley I get. Well, exactly that. You ever had an airport trolley that goes where you're pushing? No. Biaggi pushing exactly where he wants to go. Here's the pack, though. This is where all the action is. Now, let's sort this mob out because uh, That's they're Aoki. really hard at it. Aoki out in front of them. And Kato. And in the pits there is Cristiano Migliorati. He's the son of a, of a guy that used to race uh, years and years ago in the 500. Funny enough, when I did. Wasn't that long ago, though. <laughs> yeah black and white film <laughs> that's Oliver Jack at the back of that lot he's uh, it's strange actually because he was uh, I have to say that is about the worst possible color you could have for a number that silver with the 
look, if you come down there in the sun, you can't see it, can yeah, you? Yeah, 19. Yeah, Jacques, that's him on the inside. They're just Whoa. moving up in the second behind that bunch there. Yeah, I mean, it is uh, not just hard for commentators, it's hard for spectators and everybody like it. It is a silly colour scheme, now, I've got to say that. I still think the old uh, the old system of a yellow plate and a black number is the way to go. Mm. Oh, yeah, it's because at least uh, everybody knew which... Uh, that's... This is third back to six, this group. Yeah, originally the 250s used to be um, green plates with the white uh, numbers. So Kawa hanging on from Jacques. He's putting some pressure on. That's Aoki. Kato sits in behind him on that uh, the blue and silver bike. So they've had a fair struggle, this lot. I mean, they've, they've uh, changed positions a number of times, recapping the top runners. There they are. Biaggi, of course, out in front right down to Dianton. Ruggia well down in ninth places too, just in behind Baldwin. Well, that's it. And also the Spaniard dancing. He's normally uh, right up the front here and uh, he's ain't in the hunt at the moment. So Aoki now moves himself up one from Kato that appears to just drop back slightly. Take a break, come back shortly. Max Biaggi, six and a half laps ago of this demanding Suzuka circuit now. He leads Numata saying in, in second place. Position, pretty lonely ride from him in second. He was hanging on to Biaggi as, as well as he could. Jacques, then back in third, Akawa, Aoki and oh. Kato. That's how they go, but, hey, he's trying hard. I cannot believe that. I can't believe that with the mammoth lead that he has, he's still trying so hard. You saw the back end of it step out. He's still coming to that right king flat on the tank. And it's... Uh, at the end of the day, you know, it's unnecessary. That's a long way in front of Numata. Well, that's that's the gap there, way back to second place. That's Numata there on bike 52. And that's the gap back to third, fourth, fifth and sixth. So they're still hard at it. But I don't think they've really reeled Numata in. I think he's still uh, about the same distance in front of them. Well, I'm surprised at Biaggi. I think, you know, if I would be Biaggi, with that kind of lead, I'd say, well, Numata don't matter, you know, at the end of the day. He's, you know... <laughs> He's don't matter because he's way far enough behind and uh, just take it easy, watch your people. But he does look like he's trying really hard. No matter, no matter. No matter, don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Playing on words there is our bounce. It's, uh... This has been a hard struggle. Jacques has really had to fight very hard with Okawa. Kato has just been in the end there. And Okada, or Aoki, I should say, um, it's, they've just they've been swapping positions lap after lap. Oliver Jack, he's a good young talent, you know, because he's still, it's only his, I think his third season in the Grand Prix. And uh, for him to be where he is now in front of these guys, the Japanese guys that really are out to make a name, you know, in front of Okao, Aoki and Kato and Hago, you know, it's, it's good. You know, it's something to be very proud of. Well, I think the one thing we've seen this year with the 500s to 250s, and perhaps we haven't seen as much of the 125s, the amount of new names are starting to emerge. I mean, the old guard is starting to shift aside. Oh, dear, somebody in the dirt. Van der Gerber, the Dutch guy. Yeah, I mean, right through the classes, we're starting to see the old guard stand aside a bit, aren't we? Yeah, it's, well, you know, it happens all the time, doesn't it? It's, it's, well, not all the time. As years go on, you're bound to get young guys come up. And, uh, you know, as far as uh, as far as the 250 class is concerned, the, the old guard really is the, the likes of Ruggier. You know, it's Ruggier's been in it for a long, long time. And um, Oliver Jack and uh, Ralph Warman's still a young guy. You know, still a real sort of newcomer, if you like. Big shake then from Akawa. Did you see him come out of that? Really got the hot, the uh, the hippie hippie shakes up as he came out of that. The bike just shuttered its way through that corner. What do you call horseman mumbo's then? Mum mumbo, yeah. That's a mumbo, that's a the edge has got plenty of mumbo. He's gone. He's Disappeared. Used it to great effect. Do you know in the speed trap? In the speed trap uh, in practice in qualifying, Piaggi's bike was. 11 kilometers faster than anything else. I mean, that is a lot. It's a lot, you know, when he's quick around the corners, it's not like he's some uh, slow guy, slow coach around the corners, and a little look there, but would have been a bit too ambitious to do that. Kato's put himself up in a one of positions there too, as he gets over the top of Aoki. So this is where the real action is, because Piaggi's just bolted, and... Uh, Yamada is in second place, having a lonely run. He's probably about 
two and a half to three seconds, maybe even more than that in front of this pack. So the action really well and truly here. If Oliver Jacques can uh, beat this slot, he's done uh, really very, very well. You know, when it says five laps to run now, uh, you know, obviously his plan would be to get clear of them, get clear as far clear as he could to leave the three of them to fight it out amongst themselves. Kato seems to be on a bit of a mission now. He's uh, terrorising all over the back of the pack where he was sort of sitting back, maybe a length back, but you can see there he's bumped himself up in front of Aoki and now starting to really put some uh, pressure on Okawa. Yeah, you see, the thing is with Kato, he's, he's, the, it's, he's sort of a one-off ride, whereas you've got Okawa and um, Aoki, who are regular Grand Prix guys. So he's, what would you do if you were in his position? Hang on a second, I'll go and blow these two regular Grand Prix guys off. I'm going to look good, and maybe I'll have a chance to go into the Grand Prix. Unbelievable how they have a 250 race with their first back, the third so strung out, to be honest with you, because this year they have really been some uh, blood and guts racing. Well, it's sod's law, isn't it? You know, it's in, in every telecast we've ever had during the daytime, there's never been a, a race that uh, is... Oh, yes, up the inside. Gotcha. Go yeah, there's never been a race that um, is exciting. Kato has a look too, can't do it. Jacques uh, stays second in this bunch, and that's the easiest way to explain it. Third, fourth, fifth and sixth you're looking at. So third place now to a Koha. Jacques comes up on the inside, has another look, takes what looks like he's placed back. Yes, he does. So it's a good struggle here. This is more like the 250 uh, packs that we're used to. Well, yeah, the normal 250 pack would be another three alongside with that lot and another sort of six or seven just... Uh, uh, half a second behind, but uh, we've got what we've got. Aoki sitting back a little bit in this particular race, which is a bit unusual. That's him there. I guess he's, uh, you know, that's not too far back to be when you think about it, because you've got four laps to run, and uh, it's you, you get a good slipstream like that, and uh, he's not he's not by any means out of the hunt. I seem to get the feeling though he looks a bit more comfortable than the others. I don't. He hasn't quite pulled the desperate stuff off around the back part of the circuit. Anyway, we'll take a break, come back for the closing stages of the 250cc Japanese Grand Prix. Welcome back. Nice to be at your place on a Sunday afternoon as uh, we bring you the pictures from Suzuka. That's the lineup of the 250cc Grand Prix. After 16 laps, just two and a half to go. Biaggi still in front of Namata, who really has had the loneliest of rides. I guess Biaggi has too. He's just kept the hammer down, though. Jacques now has moved up to the third on bike 19. He's carved up that pack, sitting behind him, Akawa, Kato, Aoki. That really hasn't changed. In fact, the positions only from uh, third back to sixth in this group here are the ones that have been cha changed. It's still Oliver Jacques holding out the other bunch, and... Uh... The pressure will really come on now because it's, what, two, two odd laps to go. And uh, if they've got anything left up their sleeves besides their arms, they're going to get it out now because uh, it's... Watch when we go through this fast left-hand kink here, then come into the chicane, then we'll see who's the best on the brakes. Kato yeah. having a big go. All right, let's have a look. Not quite close enough. To, oh, well, there you go. We'll have to guess, won't we? <laughs> Back with Biaggi out in front, well and truly out in front. Harada, if you've just joined us, crashed on about lap five and it was a pretty big shunt too and uh, went off with his bike and got up holding his arm we're trying desperately to bring you up to date with what information we can get on that injury we hope it's only bruising but it did look a little more severe than that 11 seconds lead on this man i tell you Numata. what i thought then that numata looked like he was having some kind of problem because he he seemed to slow up a lot then that's um no. well he's still My got a pretty handy buffer on this group here Jacques just made the break on Okawa now. Kato is in behind him, Aoki in behind him. So they're starting to string out a little bit now as the pressure comes on in the closing stages. Jacques and uh, Okawa have had a pretty good battle, haven't they? Oh, they have. And as I keep saying, you know, if... Uh, whoa, nice and tight. If uh, Oliver Jacques can stay in front of him, it'll, it'll do his reputation no harm whatsoever. That's the, uh, the gap back from Biaggi back to Jacques, so there's plenty of distance there. Nothing to worry about, but this mob are not in, uh, they don't even care about that. They're having their own battle. That's a Kawa on 10, Jacques on 19, Kato on 74. Six is Aoki. 
when you think how well the little Suzuki is going, so yes, up the inside. Thank you very much. Akawa again moves up that place from Jacques. Jacques has a look up in front. It's been a good struggle with these two. This has been more like it. Yeah, Jacques seems pretty much together. You saw then as Akawa shot up the inside, he was just looking over the other side of the road, uh, other side of the hairpin. You, you can see to the other side of the track there just to see how much ground he was you know, he had on the uh, following bunch. So it's pretty clued up. And it doesn't look, to me, uh, as if he's, as if he's uh, struggling behind him. Has a look up the inside again. And That's quietly right. moves past Akawa. So this uh, battle's good. Kato seems to just sit there and uh, waiting to do the big pounce job, I think, on the last lap. He's well, let's have a look. This is what I was saying, right. If we get a look at the hairpin this time, Dad, so we can see who's... Not really anybody. Oh, Oliver Jack ran in, outbreaks himself there. That won't do himself any favours. What happens, you just ran, he ran in really deep and then had to slow it right up and come back and make a wide line out of it. And uh, you see the line, that's it's not the best time to do it. He's got some speed, though, Oliver Jack. You see, he horsepowered past uh, uh, Okawa then. Kato goes up one. Okawa, he goes past him. He just seems to me, Kato, that he's just been waiting for the big pounce. Oh, look, well, he's got nothing. To, he's got nothing uh, to lose and everything to gain. So, as you say, if there's anybody that's going to hang it out, it will be. Uh, if you were going to put your money on anybody, you'd have to say that it would be Kato. Well, I think he's oh, just. Oh, gotcha! Yeah, look at that. Oh, whoa! Yeah. Dear me, Great I thought. News. Oh, oh, dear! It's not over yet. This. But there, I just had the feeling Kato was going to do that. He's just been sitting back and waiting and waiting and having a look, and then all of a sudden, bang, he's pouncing mm. on the last uh, lap or so. Yeah, you saw Oliver Jack then as Kato came past. Um, it obviously took him a bit by surprise, gave it a bit of a handful, and then got a sideways. So, uh, yeah, it's adios to Kato. The Jacques now, a car all over the back of him. I don't know if they can catch Kato from there. Now, Akawa comes up on the inside, shows the wheel again. Not this time round, though. No, I don't think... Um, is this the last lap? Yep. And yeah, last lap. In that case, uh, Kato's got it in the bag. It was a good bit of riding, though, you know, because he stood there and he sat there and he's watched all that happen for lap after lap after lap. He's timed his run perfectly. Yeah, but as I say, you know, it makes a major difference when you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Well, it's certainly, uh, if he can hold that position now, that won't do him any harm, as you've said. He'll go into the pits uh, half a hero. Well, Biaggi just cruising home now. Sticky. Yeah, Biaggi's a terrific rider, this guy. World champion, defending his title. On the here. Back. He'll throw it up in the air as he comes down the hill over the start-finish line. Max Biaggi takes the 250cc race there, says, yes, sir, thank you. I'll have that. Here's been the main battle. Numata, who led for some time, dropped back off the pace, but a good, comfortable second. Had a pretty lonely race, but uh, he gets second place, and he'd be pretty happy with that. Head goes down. We get the little wave here. Now, here's the battle for third. It's going to be Cato. Cato over the line on the last lap. He's just trailed that mob for the entire race and then thrown it over the line for third place. In behind him is Jacques Okawa, Aoki. So that's how that battle's finished up. There's the winner, Max Biaggi. There you go, championship points. Max Biaggi leading from Harada. Boy, that's a big lead. Uh, from Don Toon, Oliver Jack, Aoki and Ralph Wardman. All right, there we go. Uh, a 250 race. A bit unusual to see anybody build up such a, a buffer in a race like that. But we've got some more to come. We'll be talking to Daryl Beattie. We're going to also uh, bring you up.